Good morning everyone, Dino Linsau here with another one of Dino's tech reviews. And today, we're going to be talking about a very budget-friendly lens. I'm talking about the 7 Artisans 25mm f1.8 lens. Let's take a look. Now this is just a reminder that my reviews aren't super technical. As a hobbyist photographer and aspiring filmmaker, really what I did was just I used this lens in some real world examples to see how it worked for me. And I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons. So let's get right into it. This 25mm lens has a pretty decent build quality for the price and also has a good weight to it since it's made of mostly metal. Physically, I love that it's really, really compact and I have no problem packing this in my camera bag all the time. The lens has two rings on it, one for focus and one for aperture. And something to keep in mind is that both of these are manual only, so there's no autofocus or camera controlled aperture. I used this lens on my Panasonic G7 on a pretty cloudy afternoon, and I gotta say I had some mixed feelings about the results. This lens really shines when it comes to up close and macro style pictures. When my settings were on point, the result was a very sharp picture with a fantastic blurry background, or bokeh effect. Portraits looked surprisingly good, though it doesn't have a very wide angle, so definitely not a vlogging type of lens. 4K video on this lens was very nice, but there's no image stabilization in the lens, so handheld footage is a bit shaky. This lens lets in a lot of light, so when I was taking pictures outdoors, even with just a small amount of sunlight out, I had to keep the aperture a bit higher than I prefer, and I also had to have the shutter speed at a much faster shutter than usual to keep from overexposing my images. But again, when I was dialed in, the pictures came out great. Okay, so now it's on to the pros and cons. Pro number one, fantastic bokeh. The blurry background you can achieve with this lens is a huge, huge plus. Pro number two, size. This lens, being a prime lens, doesn't have a variable zoom, so the final product is a lens that fits the camera body extremely well. And third, the price. This lens is cheap. You can find it on Amazon for about $70, which is awesome compared to the $1,000 plus lenses for this size focal length. There's really only one con when it comes to this lens, but it's kind of a big one for me, and that's the manual focus. Now don't get me wrong, I actually love using manual focus on lenses, and really only rely on autofocus when it comes to videos and vlogging. But I found that with this particular lens, sometimes I would see the picture in my viewfinder, and it would look excellent. Then I'd go home and plug it into my computer, and it turns out the focus was off. This can be a big problem if you spend hours taking photos and video, only to find that half of your content isn't in focus. So all in all, I would still recommend this lens to anyone looking for a low-cost prime lens. The price really can't be beat, and when all your settings are dialed in, the photos come out fantastic. It's a great starter lens for newer photographers, such as myself, and I love how capable this lens is, and I've really enjoyed using it. That's all for this episode of Dino's Tech Reviews. Please leave me some comments on what you liked or disliked about the lens, and also make sure you hit that like button down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. And again, I've also put some links in the description for not only the lens, but also for some of the camera equipment that I use on a daily basis. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon.